All right, so I'm gonna bring it home. It's not quite home, buddy. Okay. I guess it's, is it gonna land on the roof? Oh, looks like it. Shit. My name is Natasha Bajma, and these are my dogs, Charlie and Luna. In 2019, I sold my house, left my job in national security, and said goodbye to my life in Washington, D.C. to start a brand new career in film and television. We're embarking on the adventure of a lifetime, a 365-day journey across America with my Ford 350 Super Duty pickup truck and a truck camper. Everyone deserves some quality rest and relaxation, a little R&R, &R, to experience the great outdoors, take an extended road trip across the country, and find new meaning in our existence on planet Earth. But this is no ordinary road trip. This is what happens when a disillusioned nuclear weapons expert, going through a midlife crisis, tries to begin a new career, but can't quite get off topic. Come join me as I travel across America with my dogs, experience the beauty of national parks, and talk to regular Americans like you about life on the road, the joys of camping, and how to keep our country safe from nuclear war. Radioactive Road Tripping is a travelogue show that documents my transformation from a longtime national security expert to a newbie director, cinematographer, and producer. I'm sure you're wondering what happened to my brand new drone. We'll get to that shortly, but first I want to tell you a few things that I did wrong so that you avoid the mistakes when you're doing your first drone flight. Believe it or not, I did watch a lot of YouTube videos from experts telling me exactly what to do on my first flight, but I still did a bunch of things wrong. Their number one tip was to fly in an open space with no high structures, no burning fire pits. Another key tip was to practice your landings, which I clearly also didn't do. Let's say I just got a little carried away. I may have slacked a bit when it came to calibrating my compass. I did do it, but I didn't make it through the very last step because it took more than five minutes and I got impatient. If you're recording your session, you might want to remember to turn on your mic and press record on your drone controller. Check out the end of the video where I tell you some of the things I did right and what you need to do before you have your first drone flight. But for now, let's go see what happened. So I'm here in Lamar, Texas at my friend Kimmy's house. It's a beautiful sunny day and a whopping 103 degrees. We're gonna have a pool party after this, but before we do that, we're gonna conduct my first ever drone flight. Now I do know that I can fly a drone legally here. I've done all the research. There are no flight restrictions. I've also already gone through an extensive pre-flight checklist. We are ready to give this thing a whirl. Gotta wait for it to load up. It's gotta detect the satellites. Wait for the satellites. Oh, you know what? I don't even have my mic on. The first step, let me see if I have satellites. 11, 11 GPS satellites, okay. 83% battery. Okay.
forward. Oh, so that turns it around. Oh, right, that. left. And then this one kind of dodges right. Dodges left. Forward. And there's a camera, a camera function on here too. Oh, I can move the gimbal. Okay. All right. So now I'm moving the gimbal. Oh my God. This is like quite the operation. All right. So I'm going to bring it home. You want to get ready for it to come home? Here comes the drone. It's trying to find home. I think it's finding home. Landing. Not quite home, buddy. Okay. I guess it's. Is it gonna land on the roof? Oh, looks like it. There you go. No time like, don't land it on top of the dang fire pit. Okay, I think you're probably good there. Good? Yeah. That wasn't too much of a disaster, but it, it didn't look like it was going to land in the so, right place. Why? What's the deal with that? Oh, uh -huh. I guess because it's GPS, and so it's just not as it's, accurate. Yeah. Phew! That was pretty close. But the good news is that I did a lot of things right, and I'm going to run through some of those right now. I registered my drone with the FAA. If you have a drone that weighs more than 0.55 pounds, that's less than a pound, then you have to register it with the FAA. Once you've registered your drone, you need to put the registration number in a visible location on the drone. Since I'm producing footage for my YouTube channel, this counts as a commercial activity according to the FAA. As a result, I'm required to get my Part 107 Commercial Drone Pilot License. Last February, I studied for three weeks for this test, and in March, I took it and passed, so I'm now the proud owner of a commercial drone license. But that doesn't mean that I know how to fly a drone, obviously. You have to make sure that you fly your drone both legally and safely. That means that you have to do research on air restrictions. For my part 107 test, 
I learned how to read sectional charts that are used by pilots. Here I've zoomed in on the coastal region of South Texas where I live, and you can see a lot of markings on this map. All of those markings indicate air restrictions. You need to be aware of these and follow the law if you want to fly your drone. So here I've zoomed in further on where I live in Rockport Fulton and you can see a big purple circle around it, that's Schedule E airspace. That means that I need to get in touch with the air traffic control in order to fly in that space and gain authorization. Possibly even a waiver from the FAA, but I didn't look into it. Instead, I went just north of that circle to my friend Kimmy's house in Lamar, Texas, where there are no flight restrictions for my drone. I had to learn how to read these for my Part 107 license, but the good news is that once you pass that test, there's a lot of apps that can help you out. I use Before You Fly. This is an app produced by the FAA. I also use Aloft. This is where you can get flight authorizations through the FAA. It's a very handy app. Finally, I use AirMap, which is another useful app for indicating air restrictions. I also went through an extensive pre-flight checklist before I took off. I checked weather, wind conditions, but most importantly, visibility. You need at least three statute miles of visibility in order to fly a drone legally. I also checked to make sure that my drone was safe to fly. Are the batteries fully charged? The last thing you want is your battery to die when your drone is up in the air. It will drop from the sky. You also want to check to make sure your firmware is updated. Hopefully you do that at home when you have an internet connection because if you're out in the field, you're probably out of luck. And of course, satellite signals. When you load up the app for a DJI drone, it will tell you how many satellites your drone is currently connected with. You need a, quite a number of them to get a sufficient signal in order for the drone to navigate. And obviously that's really important, especially for going home, as you can see in my video. Finally, have fun. Flying a drone is not as easy as the pros make it look, but it's also not impossible. I need a lot of practice before I'm going to feel comfortable getting the kind of footage that I want from a drone. If you're worried about taking your first flight, there is a DJI flight simulator and I plan to check it out shortly. If you want to follow my journey, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'd like to have access to behind the scenes content and exclusive merchandise, become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Natasha Bajama.